Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, welcome back to another production from Radu Shubuhat. In beginning our series that we have introduced in our last video, the new series that will be conducted in seven short videos covering seven points, and the title of the series is The Status of the Quran Amongst the Sahaba, the Companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, versus the status of the Bible in particular the New Testament, amongst the disciples of Jesus, peace be upon him. We're going to be looking at seven points and how these seven points relate to how the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, approached and understood the Qur'an versus how the disciples of Jesus, peace be upon him, approached and understand the Bible, or in particular the New Testament, or the Gospel. Um, so, inshallah, we already did an introduction video. Let us get now right into our session here. Um, dealing with our first point. And our first point is the Quran was known, believed, and treated as the word of God amongst the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the Sahaba, the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them, they knew and they believed and they understood and they lived by the fact that what was being given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what he was conveying to them was in fact a revelation from God Almighty. This was their belief, and they were uh, firm and convinced about it. And their attitudes, as relates to it, showed that they took this to be the word of, of God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa taala. We find a verse in the Quran where Allah makes it very clear. He mentions what the Quran is. He says. In the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را كتاب أنزلناه إليك لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور بإذن ربهم إلى صراط العزيز الحميد. The translation in English. It says, Aleph Lam Ra, this is a book which we have revealed unto you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and reminding the believers at large that this is a revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, has revealed to who? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That you might bring mankind out of darkness and into the light by the permission of their Lord to the path of the exalted and might the praiseworthy. So this is the declaration from the Quran itself about what the Quran itself is. Allah makes it very clear that this revelation is from God being revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Also, we find in the Hadith narrated Ikrimah ibn Abbas said, "How can you ask the people of the Scripture about their books while you have Allah's book, the Quran?" which is the most recent of the books revealed by Allah, and you read it in its pure, undistorted form. This is Sayyid Bukhari, Hadith number 7522. So amongst the Sahaba, they understood exactly what the Qur'an was, and understood the importance of the Qur'an. So we see from the very inception that the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, understood, believed, and were convinced that the Qur'an was a revelation from God Almighty, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa sallam. Now, this is the point that we want to bring, the first point, that the Qur'an was known, it was believed, and it was treated as the word of God amongst the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another example of how the, the Muslims, the companions of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon them, treated the Qur'an in realizing it was God's word and that it was supposed to be treated as such. One man was reading the Qur'an in his prayer and he was reading it aloud. And another of the companions of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him heard him reciting the Qur'an and the way he was reciting was different from how he had learned the Qur'an himself. From who? From the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, he listened to the man recite it, he waited for him to finish his prayer, and afterwards he took him to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and told him that you are reciting the Qur'an in a way different from how I learned the Qur'an from you, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The man was reciting differently. 
And in, in the narration, it says that he wanted to grab him by his, his cloak and drag him even in the midst of his prayer. But he waited until he completed his prayer and he took him to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he said, he's reciting the Quran in a way different from how you taught me the Quran. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told the man to recite. And he told the other man to recite. And he said, you both are correct because the Quran was revealed with seven different Modes of recitation. So, because of that, recite was easy for you. The point in this narration is to highlight that the companions took it very serious to make sure the Quran was being recited and passed on in the exact same fashion in which they were taught. Now, initially, this man didn't know that it had a never, another mode of recitation. But because of that, when he heard it, he thought there was a, it was being misrecited and he wanted to correct what he thought to be the case. This shows you the importance and the seriousness of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as it relates to the Quran. In closing, we want to ask, when it comes to the Bible, because our point for the Quran is clear, we made our point in clarifying that the Quran was believed and treated as the word of God amongst the companions, and they were very stern in that, and very uh, aware of what the Quran was and its claim to be. When it comes to the Bible, on the other hand, the New Testament in particular, we know from the Bible it says that Jesus, and he went out and he preached the Angel. He went out and he preached the Gospel. The question is, the Gospel or the Angel or the New Testament that we have today, did the disciples of Jesus understand this very scripture that we have today called the Word of God, the Gospel, to be what was preached by Jesus, peace be upon him? Did they have the same understanding and belief and conviction and, and and determination to imply what they learned from Jesus, peace be upon them, the same way the Muslims had with the Quran? Did the disciples of Jesus even know or was aware of what we have today called the New Testament, the Gospels of Matthew, and the Gospel of Mark, and the Gospel of Luke, and the Gospel of John? Did the disciples at all understand anything of these books that's called the gospel and attributed to Jesus, peace be upon him, we would beg to differ. So if that was the case, if the disciples of Jesus knew nothing whatsoever of the gospel of Matthew, the gospel of Mark, the gospel of Luke, or the gospel of John, how is it possible that they could have understood these writings to be the word of God when they knew nothing of them whatsoever? Unlike the Muslims' understanding and reception of the Quran as it came to them. This is a point that we want to raise. This is our first point, and we hope that you stay tuned for point number two, which is, in fact, many of the companions around the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have memorized the entire Quran by heart, and many more have memorized a great portion of it during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is point number two. Stay tuned for point number two, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته